Good morning. Oh, I have response. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Good. We are developers, like the majority of you here in this room, I guess. Every day, we are on a quest for the best technologies and the best frameworks to deliver the very best applications we can for our customers. Today, this heroic team, Ton, Geert, and myself, Manu, will be sharing our journey, which led to using Alfresco together with AngularJS. So why do we build custom UIs? Share is a great application which embodies all the functionality Alfresco has to offer. Of course, therefore, it is very complex, and users need to sift through all the functionality to get their job done. Some users only need a subset of the functionality, and, well, that's why we try to build a custom UI for them. Also, Alfresco Share has a lot of code to run, so it can also be slower than a custom-made application. When we build a custom UI, we can build a focused application which only exposes the functionality the user needs. So they can use the application very fast and they need less training because there's only a subset of functionality exposed. Also, the application has a lot less code to run and we have an unlimited flexibility to adapt to the customer's needs. Okay, um, when we want to create a custom user interface, we define some goals so that we can find a suitable framework. First goal, tailor-made. We want to create a user experience that fits the needs of our customers. So the framework has to be very flexible and customizable. Of course, we want our application to be well tested. That's why we try to cover all the code that we write with some uh, unit and integration tests. And we do that in the back end as well as in the front end. So what do we mean with clean? Well, we as developers, we, would, we like to write clean code, and we like to have a clean project set up. So uh, if a new developer joins the team, he can just check out the code and start developing. And last but not least, we want to create a smooth user uh, experience for the end customer. And on the other hand, we as developers like to have a short build cycle, so if we change some code, we can just refresh the page and see the result. So, now let me state this from the beginning. Very important, developers are heroes. I'm sure you all agree with me on this, right? Right, okay. Now, why I hear the sales ask in the back? Because developers are on a continuous search for the holy grail of development. Because developers always want to try out that cool framework that we read about yesterday. So, it won't be a surprise then that we at ACA IT Solutions are on a continuous quest also. We have done several projects, and oh yes, we're still searching for the Holy Grail. Now we're going to show you a little bit of our history. Our first application on Alfresco, we used Surf Web Script and uh, Free Marker templates to generate HTML. Simple, right? It was okay but we thought we could do better. So we moved on and we built a rich web client with rich faces and CMIS. It was cool, there was some business logic in the web client, but it was more or less loosely coupled, so it was an improvement. Further along our journey, we started extending Alfresco Share, which in some cases is very useful because there's a lot of functionality already there which a user and a customer might want. The problem was that we certainly, uh, we quickly started to hit some boundaries because they wanted some custom UIs, some custom user, in, uh, user interactions, which we couldn't provide in Alfresco Share without overriding code. So we moved on to building custom UIs again. We started using Vaden. Vaden is a Java web framework which generates HTML and JavaScript. And we used it to connect to Alfresco using REST APIs. This was great, we had a loosely coupled application, but we needed to write our presentation logic in Java code, and we had little notion about the real web technologies, HTML and JavaScript, that were at work. So we were looking for something else. We stumbled upon Ember.js, which is a JavaScript framework, so we could really work with the HTML and JavaScript technologies, so we really knew what was going on in the browser. 
The problem with MOJS was that it had a steep learning curve and that at the moment that we were using it, it had an unstable API and it wasn't entirely built around testing. And that's very important to us. So we moved along. So in our quest to find the most suitable framework, we encountered AngularJS. And if you're familiar with the model view controller framework and you know JavaScript, then there is a really low learning curve. So there are also a lot of excellent tutorials, tutorials on the internet, and the documentation is good as well. But even if AngularJS is the right fit, our journey doesn't stop here, because we have to stay one step ahead before the legacy uh, Pac-Man bites our ass. So if we Google AngularJS, we'll find out that it is a superheroic. Perfect. What a coincidence. Uh. JavaScript, model, view, whatever framework. One of the key features of AngularJS is two-way binding. So for example, if we have an input field on the view and we bind it to something on the model, we can just update the input field and the model will be updated as well. And the other way around, if we update the model, it will be automatically synchronized to the view. Another key feature is our directives. Well, directives extend the basic HTML vocabulary with some uh, new elements and uh, attributes. And you can use them to uh, write some templates, custom components, or to add extra behavior to your application. Then we have animation, dependency injection filters, uh, routing, and so on. But I'm afraid we don't have time to see all those topics into detail during this presentation. Now, the key question, what are we going to build? Well, especially for you guys, we went on an adventure before this talk into the future to make a screenshot of our application we're going to build. Ta-da! Nice, right? Now, uh, what are we seeing here? Well, this is what we'd call a media wall, or we call it a media feed. You can see there are some photos here, what well, this is actually is an AngularJS front-end that will get media out of Alfresco, of course, and will display it here in a feed style. Cool. But not only that, we will be able to add new media using drag and drop, and we will automatically update the front-end when there is new media in the back-end. Sounds nice, right? Highly specialized, perfect for the customer what he needs. Now, this is where it gets a little more, bit more technical. Here we can see a schematic view of the architecture we're going to build. On the left, you have the UI in AngularJS. On the right, you have our backend Alfresco. We will do development in three steps. First, basic, we will make our media feed to display the items that are in the repository. Second, we will enable drag and drop in the front end and a, a web script that supports the posting of data. Last but not least, we are going to write a server sent events web script that will send events to the front end when the media has changed on the back end. So the front end is automatically updated when there are new media in the repository. Now, wait a minute. I think something is missing here, guys. Yeah, I think too. Uh, something is missing to make this really up to date. I know. We will upload everything to the NSA. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. So, how do we start? We, of course, first need an AngularJS project. We can do this all manually, create our directories, our files, download the dependencies from the web, but that's not the way we like to work. We want something automated, which uh, will generate a project for us. So we started looking for a framework to do that. And we stumbled upon Yeoman. Yeoman is a set of technologies that we can use to generate a modern web application. This can be an AngularJS project, an AmberJS project, or something different. It consists out of three main technologies, and the first one we see here is Yo. Yo will create the build, uh, will create the project structure for you do, um, with project templates. 
So we have an Angular project template uh, which we feed to Yo, and Yo will generate the project for us. Grunt is a JavaScript build tool which will be used to build and test our application and also, of course, preview it on a local development machine. And last but not least, we have Bower. And Bower is the maven for web dependencies. So it will automatically resolve and download our web dependencies like jQuery, AngularJS itself, of course, and other JavaScript dependencies that we might need. To create a project, we have a one-liner, well, actually a two-liner in this case. Uh, we will create first our project directory and go to it. And then with one command, we can uh, execute uh, Yo to generate an Angular project for us. So Angular is the name of the project template in this case. To build and test the project, we, run, uh, we use Grunt to run the test profile. And in this case, it will start up the application in the browser, and it will run automatic unit and integration tests against it. After the build has run, we will have a report to see which tests failed and which tests succeeded. And of course, we also want to play with our own application. So we use the Grunt server command to run the application on our local development machine so we can demo it to the client or do some uh, manual integration tests if needed. OK, uh, in the back end, we will use the Alfresco Maven SDK to build the project. And we can do that by uh, executing the following command. And we follow the wizard, and it will create a project uh, structure for us with some sample files so we can just start developing. If you want to build the project, run some tests, and install it into the local repository, we run the first line. If we run the second line, um, the code is built. It will run some tests. It will start Alfresco in memory. And it will run some automated integration tests against the in-memory Alfresco. So the second profile is something that we configured at ACA. And it will use the Alfresco uh, of the Maven fail safe plugin uh, to run some rest assured tests against our web scripts. And the last command we will use to start our fresco in memory so that we can test uh, manually against it. All right, let's attack the code. Guys, it's time to gear up. OK. Ready. Oh, hi. OK, let's start in the front end. So we want to build an application with Angular. So let's go uh, fire up IntelliJ. And let's go to the app.js file. So if you create an Angular application, we start by creating a new module. OK, let's do this. We give it a name. And now we want to provide a controller so that we can control the application and provide a scope. So now let's create a controller. And we call it main controller. Oh my god, Nana, you're a really fast typer. I know. <laughs> How are you doing this? Magic. <laughs> nice. OK, so we provide the media feed variable, which will contain an uh, array of media items. And we set it on, up, uh, on the scope. We have a dollar HTTP service, which is an out-of-the-box uh, AngularJS service. And we use it to connect to the backend, so to connect to the Alfresco web scripts. So now let's do the actual uh, HTTP call. So we do a get call to the following URL, which will be uh, the Alfresco web script. And on success, we will take the JSON. And we will put it into the media feed variable, which is on the scope. On error, we will just show an alert message. Whoopsie, couldn't retrieve media from Alfresco. In Very professional. Mm. No. So now we have a module, and we have a controller, and we want to bind it into our application. So let's go to the index.html page. OK, first the module. We will bind it to the HTML page using the ng-app directive. Now we want to bind the controller as well. 
and we do that on the div class container, and we call it ng controller uh, main controller. So within this div, we have access to the scope, so we can access the media feed. So wouldn't it be nice if we could just create a tag to show the media? Well, let's do this. Let's create a media tag. And here we can see that we have a media tag, and we use the ng repeat directive to iterate over the different items in the feed. And we say media item in media feed. We use the media item to assign it to the item, which is an attribute in the media tag. So now we need to create uh, the directive itself. So let's go back to the app.js file. Let's create the directive and call it media, which is the name of the tag, of course. And we say we want to restrict it to an element. Um, the second part, we will say, OK, it's an item. Uh, we, want, we want to pass the item into the media variable, which will be available on the scope of, within the scope of the media template. So let's go to the media template itself. So let's open media.html. And let's add some basic HTML to this page. OK, well, we see basic HTML, but there are some tags that are not default HTML. So we have the ng switch and the on, which are uh, Angular directives. And we use them to switch over the MIME type, because we are, we'll, uh, we are going to have video and um, images. Uh, at the end of the page, we see some curly braces. And the curly braces are called Angular expressions. And we will use them to show the title of the media. So now let's add the actual uh, video, HTML video and image tag. OK, nice. So in the first, we will show the video when the, uh, the MIME type of the media is video slash MP4. And we will show the image when the MIME type is image slash JPEG. OK, that's it. But how can we be sure that this works, Manu? Well, I suppose we write a unit test. OK. So let's see how we do this in AngularJS. I have here already a test skeleton, the main controller test. And what we want to test is that our main controller returns two items in this case. So let's set some expectations. We expect that the media feed has a length of exactly two items. And the second expectation will check whether the first item in the media feed has a title which is equal to the string, a nice picture. But of course, we are running a unit test, so we do not have an Alfresco backend. So we need to mock the HTTP service to make sure that some items are returned. To do this, we need to do some setup for our test. So let's do this now. I know I type a little bit fast, so let me go through the code step by step. I define some variables, uh, the media feed URL, so the URL of the web script that we will use. Uh, the main controller, uh, just to make it clean code, I will declare, decline, declare, sorry, declare the strings above. And then I have two variables, the scope and each HTTP mock variable that I will be using through the test. So in this uh, setup, I will inject some AngularJS services, the controller service, the root scope service, the HTTP service, of course, and the HTTP backend service. And this is a service provided by the Angular mock framework to mock the HTTP service. So I assign. Uh, a new scope to the variable I declared above. And I, decla I declare the HTTP backend uh, variable to the HTTP mock variable. So then I mock it with the expect get method. And when that URL that I here described above is um, executed, I will return two media items. And one of them, as you can see here, has a title, a nice picture. And then, of course, I initialize the main controller manually with the scope that I created and the HTTP service, which has been mocked in this case. So this should work. Let's see. I'm going to the terminal, going to my project, 
and I run the grunt test command. So this can take a while for the first time. Well, okay, this time it's quite fast, so that's good. It's starting the Chrome browser, as you can see, to load the application and test it with the unit tests. And as we can see here, our tests has been successful. We have one test of one that is successful, and our build yeah, succeeded. So that's good. Awesome. So I think that we sh should uh, first demo it as well in the browser. So I will start the application with the grunt server command. Let's see. And then I refresh the page here in Chrome. And we see an error message, the error message that we defined, whoopsie, current retrieve media from Alfresco, which is normal because the HTTP service isn't there yet. So that's all okay. Perfect, right? Okay. <clears throat> now, something is missing here, some actual data. So we need to connect to the backend, our web script. So now we will build a web script in Alfresco. Hit it. I'll hit it. <laughs> all right. Of course, for the purpose of the de this demo, we already created a skeleton class. Perfect, the get media feed web script. As you can see, we have a media item service. For those of uh, you who have worked with repository in Java, I don't recognize this. Well, that's because we built it. This is an item service that we wrote to facilitate our demo, it will do all the actual interaction with the repository, like getting items, searching for them, and saving them. Okay, now, our execute method is the actual method where we have to do our logic for the web script. What we have to do is, of course, search for our items, which we can do with our media item service, get feed. As you can see, this returns a list of media items. What is media item? Well, it's nothing more than a plain old Java object. It contains some metadata we need for this uh, application, and that's it. Okay, perfect. Then we create a media feed instance, which is actually also just a plain old Java object, which contains nothing more than a list of media items. Perfect. After this, we set the content type to the response, the web script response. And then, apparently, we write directly to the web script response. Hmm. So, we don't use free marker templates here. We prefer to do it this way. What are we doing here? We are using JSON. For those of you who don't know this, JSON is a framework by Google. Apparently, the G stands for Google. And what does this do? Very simple and very cool. It can convert Java objects to their JSON representation or the inverse, convert JSON to Java objects. Pretty cool, right? That's exactly what we need here. So what we're going to do is convert our feed response, which is our media feed instance, directly to JSON to send it as in the response. OK, that does the trick. Only we can't call ourselves really heroes if we don't write an integration test. So that's what we're going to do now. Luckily, we already built also a skeleton class for this. Now, first things first, we need to do some stuff before we can connect to the backend, eh? right? So we need to set up rest assured. There it is. Rest assured is a little framework we can use to make rest connections, which is perfect for our purpose. So we do some config there, and we set the port of our application, nothing complicated. And then, as you can see, we create a CMIS session. Why are we using CMIS here? Well, actually, if we want to test our web script, we have to have some data in the repository. So perfect for this is CMIS, better. It is standard in Alfresco, the web scripts are standard, so we can use this in a standardized way to add some test content and afterwards delete it for our test. Okay? In our create media methods, we can then add some media, test media for our test. We start by getting a specified folder in the repository. 
for this project, all our media will be in the slash media root folder in Alfresco. So we get this folder, and then we add to this folder a new simple content item. In our case, test.txt, which is a plain text content item, perfect for the purpose of our test here. Okay. Of course, every good developer hero cleans up his mess afterwards, so we have to clean up our test data also. We don't want to leave this in our repository. As you can see, what we do is we loop over all items in our media folder, all children, and then we delete all the children. Okay, perfect. The only thing that leaves us, that, we, that we still have to do is write the actual test. So, we use rest assured here. Of course, we expect that the content type returned is JSON. We, we want to test this to make sure. Huh? Also, we know that we added one item to our test repository, so it should return one item, our response. And then we can do the get on our web script that we created before. Simple, right? That's it. Okay. Let's that, run it. That leaves us just running it. But uh, most of you who have done development using the Arfresco Maven SDK know that this can take some time to run. So we're not actually going to wait for this to finish. We're going to move on and later on check if our tests have run successfully. Okay. Okay, next. Um, we want to enable the users to drag and drop some items from their desktop into the browser. So, let's go back to the code, Mano. Let's go to the front end, so to the app.js file. And we want to inject an existing module into, the, to, into our application, so we update uh, the dependency list of our application. We call it Angular File Upload, and that's the name of the module. And we inject the, a service which is on the module into our controller. The name of the service is Dollar File Uploader. Now let's create an uploader which will do all the magic. So we specify the URL to the web script that will do the actual upload in Alfresco. And we will uh, define some, of we will bind some be, uh, callbacks. So before upload and on complete, we want to uh, display a loader. So when the upload is in progress, we want to show a loader bar in the application. So we can do that by setting the is loading variable uh, on the scope. So that's it in the in the JavaScript code. Now let's go back to the index.html where we have to define a drop zone. So we can say we want to specify a drop zone on one div, but we will use the whole page in our case and we will define the drop zone on the HTML tag. So uh, now we want to show the loader as well. Huh? So let's add an extra div. And we say ng show, which is an Angular directive, and we will show the diff when the is loading variable, which is on the scope, is true. That's it. Can we test this? Well, we will load up the application. Oh, well, it's already loaded yep. up, so okay. let me we just refresh just the page. have to refresh it, yes. See, we have the error message, as expected. And let me drop something into this screen. Okay, let's take nice an item. Picture. I'll drop, drop it. it. Oh, and nothing happens. Let's inspect the page. Hmm. Ah. One error. Hmm. Fail to load resource. The server responded with the status of 500. Okay, so that's normal because the web script in the backend is not yet available. Yeah. So, let's move on then. Okay to the web script. Not every day that you see a demo where an error is normal. <laughs> this here. Uh, be 
before we continue, let me first check the results of our previous ah, test, yes. won't we? Okay. So maybe to be clear, rewind. We're going back to step one. The tests we started running, we're now going to look at the result. Okay, let's go. Let's see. So there's a lot of. So we see already a build success. success. Let yes. me zoom into that, mm -hmm. that we can see it. It's Perfect. successful. Let's see if our test has been run. Hmm. Let's zoom out. It's easier. Um, <laughs> well, ah, no. Here. So here we see the get media feed test has been run. And it was successful. And the? Oh, no. Yeah. OK. <laughs> and the what? <laughs> Spontaneity. OK. <laughs> OK, so we can go with, uh, further with the development, I think. Yes. Of course, we need some backend code to be able to actually upload some files. Let's move to the code. OK, so we already built a skeleton class for this also. The post media web script. Again, the first thing you see here is the media item service. Here we will use it to actually save our data to the repository, nothing special. Okay, now we actually have kind of a problem here because you know a web script request, you can't actually get an uploaded file from this. This is a problem because we need to have this file to be able to save it to the repository. But there is a simple fix for this provided by Alfresco. We have to convert our web script request to a web script servlet request. It's a little bit dirty, but no way around this. We have to do this, and we do it in this get servlet request method. OK, now we have this. We can actually save the file. OK, after Mano's magic typing skills, you can see that we call our get servlet request method we just created. Then we get the file field media file, which contains our actual binary file. OK, we save it. And then we check if it's not null, of course. And if it actually is a file, we don't want it to be some form field and not our actual file. Perfect. The only thing that uh, leaves us to do is that we have to save the file using the used file name, the MIME type, and of course, its content. Simple. That's it. Of course, if we want to be real heroes, we have to test this with an integration test. So let's go to our integration test skeleton class, post media IT. Here also, we have to set up our REST connection. Yeah. So we use REST Assured also. The same setup we've seen before, we do it here. OK, now we can actually write our test. We will test our upload with a test content item, beach.jpg, as you can see, which is in our actual development project. Voila, pretty picture of some sand in micro. OK, we will upload this using our awesome post web script we just created. And then we will check that the return is the HTTP state is OK or 200. Perfect. OK. Now, we want to run this test, of course. But because, again, this will take some time, we will take a different route. We will actually start our server now and run our integration test directly to the server afterwards. So we can use our running server afterwards for the rest of our demo purpose. OK, then we can move on. OK, uh, sometimes we want to send a message to all our connected clients. So how can we do this? Well, we could use WebSockets, but in our case, we just want uh, one-way uh, communication. So let's use server sent events. Server sent events use the HTTP protocol. So with some minor tweaks, we can just use an Alfresco web script to, achi to achieve this. On the client side, we will use the HTML5 event source object, which will uh, take care of the connection to our web, web script in the backend. OK, let's code this. 
This is awesome. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> okay. Now, we have a little confession to make. This web script we have already built. But <laughs> we will make a blog post about this. We will on our uh, company's blog, po uh, blog, and we will release this into the wild for you all, how to make a web script that uses service and events. OK? So we will whoop, move forward here. OK. Uh, don't you want to show the, sh the code on the back end? Maybe that's a good <laughs> idea. I totally <laughs> forgot about that. Right. So we have our library that uses that uh, for the server and events web script, but we can still show you some stuff. We can show you the description file of the server and event web script. As you can see, it has a new URL defined event. So this is the URL to use for the server and events. We will use this in our front end later on. Afterwards, we of course for our web script we have our context file, as you can see, the SSE web script dot get. The parent is the SSE web script class. So how do we send, how do you actually cap capture our events? Well, we use behaviors. For those of you who don't know behaviors in Alfresco, behaviors are for catching certain events in Alfresco and then doing some logic on them. Perfect for our purpose because we want to capture when new media is added to our repository. So we have a behavior that catches these new create content items and then tells our web script to send an event to all the clients out there that there is a new media item. Okay. Okay. Let's go to the back end, uh, the front end. Back to app.js because we want to inject a new module into our uh, existing application. And the name of the module is uh, SSE. So now let's configure the endpoint uh, for the server sent events. And we do that by the config element and we provide the URL to the Alfresco web script in the backend. As you can see, the events that I described to you. Okay, and now let's inject the server sent event service into the cont controller so that we can register an event to it. Okay. And we want to register the new media event, which will be sent from the backend. So when you receive the new message, the message will contain some JSON. And the JSON is, in this case, uh, a new media item. So we can just take the JSON and set it onto the media feed variable which is on the scope. So that's it. No changes in the front end because we have the two way binding. It will just update the front end when a new media item arrives. Awesome. Cool. So I propose before we test this, we look at the left script. Uh, yes, we will do a okay. rewind again. So as I was saying, for the post media web script, we run our server. Now the server has started, and we will run our integration test directly against the server. Yeah. So I was. Manu, how this. do we do this? As you can see, we call the failsafe plugin, the Maven failsafe plugin, directly on the command line, and we specify the test it needs to run. In this case, our post media IT class. Okay. Run this. Let's do this. Against the running server, of course. So let's see. It starts the build. It runs the test. As you can see here, I will zoom in again. Here we see that the test has been run. And that success. is successful. So All right. successful build. Awesome. So we don't need to worry about the backend again. <laughs> this demo is going so well. <laughs> so let me now refresh the application here. So to recap, oh, what's this? An item. An item. We have an item that's coming out of Alfresco. I think we forgot to clean up our post te IT test. <laughs> that's why the beach so is over here. You see, we haven't been that heroic developers. We <laughs> forgot to clean up our mess after our test. But so okay, it works. So. It works. <laughs> it proves our point. This is coming directly from Alfresco.
Cool. So let me put another file in it to test the drag and drop this time. Yes. So a little bit of grass. And we see, Ooh. thanks to service and events, we do not need to refresh the page. The item is automatically displayed here. We did not need extra logic to do this. I didn't even see the loading bar. It was that fast. <laughs> it's blazingly fast, yes. <laughs> so this works, right? But let's make this a little bit cooler. If other users add some media, it will appear at the bottom of the media feed. Uh, but in this case, we want to be notified by uh, by the user interface that this media is actually added. So we will automatically scroll down to the media. Maybe not desirable in every case, but in our case, it would be cool. Yeah. So wouldn't it be cool if we could create a directive for this? Well, of course we can. So let's see. It would be nice if we could just use an attribute for this. So for example, on the body, I could define an attribute auto scroll down. What's this funny case there? Oh, that is the snake case. Snake case. I will come back to that later on. <laughs> so, and we will pass something to that attribute, of course. So what can we pass? Maybe the name of an event. So in this case, the media changed event. And so every time that this event has uh, been uh, well, emitted by the application, we will automatically scroll down to the, the, the bottom of the body element. So of course, this attribute needs some implementation. So let's create a directive for this in our app.js file. I will create an auto scroll directive here. So this time it's called auto scroll down. And as you can see here, I use camel case. So Angular does an automatic conversion of the name from camel case to snake case. So you need to be aware of that. And this time it's not an element, but an attribute. And in the link function, which is a function provided by every directive, we can add some logic. And here we will retrieve the name of the event that we pass to the attribute. And every time that this event is emitted, so we use a scope dollar on, we use some logic. In this case, we use uh, this function to scroll down to the element we bind the attribute on. So this is very usable, we can put it on every element, any element we want, and use any event that we want. So of course, we have no uh, place at the moment where we emit the media changed event, so let's do that here. Every time a server sent event comes in, we will emit a new event called media changed, and this will um, trigger the automatic scroll down. So we use a scope variable and the emit function, and we will emit a new event called media changed. It's that simple. So let's see if this works. I just need to refresh the page. I do not need to reboot my server. And well, we need some media, of course. So I prepared a script for that, of course. <laughs> let's see here. And if I run this, we should see all the media. Wait. Comment. How does this script work? It will, it will add content directly to the repository? Yeah, directly to the repository. Okay, cool. Using so our servers script. and events, our front end has no knowledge of this no. content. It uses our own web scripts, by the way. Ah, perfect. So let's see. I run it, go to the application, see if this works. Let's hope that this works. Oh my god. And it is. Awesome. You see all the media coming in automatically, thanks to servers and events. It's scrolling down. Yeah. No refresh necessary. There's even a dessert in there. <laughs> <laughs> we have some double images, but awesome. Isn't this cool? This is cool, right? I want to hear it. It's cool. Yeah, yeah it's cool. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So let's see if all the media is coming in. Is all the media coming in? Is it finished? Okay. Oh, let's see. Is let's it finished? Yes. Let's yes, it is. Try to do the drag and drop with yeah. one, uh, of the items. Yeah. Let's so add a video, man. A video? Yeah. Let's add a video. Okay. Let's see if I have a video somewhere here on my desktop. Uh, maybe here. I thought I had a video here. Yes, I have a video here. So let's see. Let's drag and drop. I'll it. drag it into the application. 
Whoop. Okay, there oh, it is. Did you? Should hey, I uh, play it? Of course. I think we should play it, yes. Yes? I will use some sound. Hmm? Cool video. Cool. Well, yeah. Big thanks to our biggest fan who created the video for us. <laughs> <laughs> so, that was the whole application. It works without any flaw in this case. Thank for the cut of demo. <laughs> so, let's see, did we create a tailor-made application? Well, I think we did. Yeah, we did. We had a nice custom user interface. The user did not even know it was using Alfresco Share. Uh, well, it only exposed the functionality we needed, so great. Well, did we create a well-tested user interface? We wrote quite some tests, right? Yeah, I we think had that's integration a check. tests, everything, yeah. the front, the back, great. Did we have a clean application? Check in the box. Check in the box. We had, uh, we had clean code thanks to AngularJS, the Pansy injection. We had clean HTML templates thanks to the directives. So I think this is very readable. And that we have a fast application. <laughs> Blazingly fast. I didn't even see the loading icon. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was definitely fast. Not too much code to run thanks to service and events, no refreshes. And we developed it also quite fast, yeah. I think. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> thanks to my fast typing skills. Yes. <laughs> But of course, our journey doesn't end here. Every day we will be searching for new technologies and new frameworks, but today and hopefully the coming months and maybe even the coming year, we will be using AngularJS to build our applications. We also will write some blog posts about this application to go in depth in the service and event websites, for example, and to go more in depth in some of the code. Maybe security. Maybe security. Which that would be nice. Handled over <laughs> So if you have any topic that you would like to see covered in these blog posts, just tweet at ACA underscore IT with the hashtag summit now, and we will do our best to create a blog post about it. Thank you. So we have actually two minutes left for some questions, if there are there. Somebody with questions? No? Okay. okay. Pretty awesome Thanks. application, I think. Thank you Thank very you. much.